Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the Royal Kludge RK61. Yes, but this one is a little different. This one has QMK, so it looks like they're moving in the right direction. So today, um, while I'm going to uh, go into the source and via as well, I'm, we're going to go ahead and mod it as well. But since we're going to do that, let me go ahead and get the stock sound test out of the way. All right, um, that was just a small clip. I'll provide a full clip at the end of the video. But for myself anyway, the RK61 was the first 60% kit that I bought. Um, I too was like a lot of people like, wait a minute, how do I make it work with such a small keyboard? Where are the other keys? How am I going to get around? There's no arrows. And it was, it really helped me dive deeper into the hobby, but also figure out that yes, if I need, I can use a 60%, especially when you have uh, firmware such as QMK and an interface such as VIA because that way I'm able to program the keyboard and maybe use arrows with different keys maybe do you know some extra programming and not that RK software you know it was okay now there is an open source solution out there it's on github it's called Rangoli R-A-N-G-O-L-I and if I remember I'll put a link down in the description um, if I don't, just remind me. Um, and, and it works with a lot of the RK boards, but it just is, it can only do what the closed source software can do. So, in a way, it's kind of limiting. Now, it, they're usually pretty good about the per key RGB and the, key, uh, the RGB customizations, which can be done on QMK, but you have to program in a QMK and then bind a key like using any key and passing to QMK that you want that particular light combination to be set. Um, so it's basically calling a method inside of QMK because you're building the firmware from source. Yes, it's a little bit more complicated for most. And yes, I'm a programmer. So for me, it was just kind of like, oh, wait a minute. I just got to build a method to find couple of things, import a few libraries, and then I've got a firmware of my own, or most of the firmware is already set up. I read through the files, I get a basic understanding of what's going on, and I read through the documentation. I can add, you know, built-in functionality. Um, I can control the light colors. I can change the way that it behaves down to basically anything that it is capable of doing because of the MCU. So, um, Sorry to go off on that rant. Basically, the RK61, I could comfortably say that probably a good portion of people that are in this hobby and have been in it for a little while um, have at one point or another had an RK61. So so today we're going to open it up. We're going to take a look at the, uh, the MCU and we're going to go ahead and mod it and see what this RK61 QMK edition really offers because, I mean... It's always had a place in my heart because, like I said, it was my first 60% and helped me get over the the wall of thinking that there was no way to use a keyboard that was smaller because it was missing keys. And, you know, started thinking of a more three-dimensional, um, you know, with the layers of functionality that you could get out of a keyboard. Just because, you know, it was only one key doesn't mean that it had to only be that key. I mean... I could double tap it. I could press and hold. I could do it in a combination. So there's different things that you can do to find the best way to use your keyboard. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. I picked this up on Amazon and I saw it. It was actually a comment that was made. Uh, I think on one of my review videos when I posted on Budget Keeps, uh, one of the members said, well, Royal Clutch now has two QMK keyboards. And I was like, what? And he said one was the RK61 and I found it. 
The other one is a RKR65, which I had seen before, and I do know that it was released previously um, with closed source software. It's not QMK out of the box, but it does have QMK. Basically, there's a reset button underneath the space bars, and I will be doing a just standard review of this one and seeing how it is because I've, I've I have actually seen this keyboard and it does sound like like it's pretty good out of the box. And also, not for nothing, I think that the, this RK actually sounds a little bit better out of the box because they've actually added dampening. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. We've got the RK user manual. We've got an extra set of red switches, which is what we have loaded on there. I can't say how much I appreciate this. I saw a thread on Reddit the other day uh, of a user that broke a pin on the switch and he didn't have any extra switches and he was trying to come up with a way to fix it. I mean, best just to go ahead and buy either a new set of switches, just a single switch or a 10 pack and have some spare switches. So I really appreciate when companies are thoughtful and they include an extra set of switches. We have your standard uh, rubberized USB-C to USB-C cable with an A adapter connected with the tail. Also, Really appreciate it because a lot of laptops nowadays only have the USB-C cord. And we have your standard wire and keycap holder. And here we are with the RK61 UMK edition. The majority of viewers, I'm going to assume, are probably familiar with this keyboard. But just in case, we're going to go over the basics. Uh, this one, we have red switches. Usually, you can get them in the red uh, linears, which are light. Uh, 35 gram linears they're rk brand uh i do believe they are manufactured by otemu but i'm not 100 positive on that um they're they usually do not come pre-lubed but you can also get them in brown which are tactile or blues which are clickies um now first one that i purchased did not have any dampening um, i've modded it since then it's actually one of my son's keyboards now but we have shine through keycaps i do believe that they're abs but i'm not 100 positive i'm pretty sure um, they're abs keycaps but they have nice clean legends they've got the extra added die sub i would guess because they're not double shot so that they have the extra die sub sub legends so you can see where the default functions are for the lights um, and for some of the keys that are not already here like pause like insert like delete um, and here are your arrows uh, usually you can uh, I believe on this one it's double tap to go into function mode and then you'll really use these as arrows and you'll double tap it out to get back to alt menu control but don't quote me on that I've used so many keyboards that it gets Sometimes they get a little confused in my head. So the stock keycaps are 1.3 millimeter in thickness. So they're better than I think they, they used to be. I, I want to say they, they used to be one, if not 0.9. So they have made revisions along the way, which is something that I've noticed. And hey, I appreciate it because they're, they're still selling this keyboard. So, <laughs> um, and then we can see that we have the red switches. Oh, still has a steel plate, but hey. You can't perfect everything. I mean, they've got QMK, so they're definitely moving in the right direction. So it is a little bit pingy. It's not as pingy as I remember reds being, but even with the minimal amount of ping, because we got a steel plate, it's going to reverberate. So we have three and five pin hot swap compatibility with a north facing um, RGB LED, but we're going to be switching these out. Before right now, I'll just leave it back in. Let's take a look at the stabilizers. Now we do appear to have the newer, I believe they're palm stabilizers. And wow, these are the best attached stabilizers that I've ever seen on an arcade board. I gotta say, these are definitely on there. They've certainly adjusted the uh, tolerances. Um, these are well lubed. The wire looks pretty straight. Yeah, that's uh. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, unfortunately, we do not have the ability for screw and stabilizers, but that's just something, I mean, there's only so much you can expect at this price point. But I gotta say, I do like the improved stabilizers. 
Um, they didn't sound bad at all. Now let's look under the space bar because this is where we find our handy dandy reset button. That's how we're going to put it into DFU mode and load up QMK, which we'll get to in a little bit because it doesn't, from what I understand, it doesn't come out of the box with QMK. But that's just one of the many things we're going to do today. Like I said, I remember my first arcade did not have, I don't want to, I want to say it didn't have any dampening at all, but it could have had a really light foam down below. But we've got an open cell foam down below, down below the PCB, as well as a nice thick layer between the plate and the PCB. And that's probably one of the reasons that it doesn't sound half bad. And it's not reverberating as bad as it would because that material acts to dampen it and help prevent it from vibrating and creating that ping resonance. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and strip it bare. I wanna get to the insides. I wanna see what the MCU is. And here we are with the RK61 all laid out. Um, I took some pictures of the uh, MCU. It, it is an arm, and you can see the specific model there. Uh, it does have, like we saw before, the reset button. It appears to also have some um, different watermarking. Uh, actually, putting out every letter, I don't recall the original one having it. And, like I said, I've had a couple of revisions of it, so and I've done so many keyboards at this point that it's hard to remember specific details and don't really feel like taking my sons apart. <laughs> so it has a manufacture date of 2023, August 11th, and version 1.1. Hmm. This can't be just the, the second revision of the keyboard. I mean... I'm sure they probably started before before one, like zero or something, but I don't know. What can we do to make this sound better before we go in and load up QMK? I don't know, but let's get started. All right, so I've applied most of the mods. I'm going to finish reassembling the keyboard here, and then we can move on to QMK. Just to let you guys know what I did, I did. I haven't used this in a while, but I checked my other RK1 and this is what I did before because I could have used Killman. I could have used a few things, but the RK61 is really light. And one of the mods that I like to do, especially with this one, is a combination of not only silicone because it's got all the different compartments. Now, yeah, I could cut all that stuff out, but I think it would just structurally affect the soundness of the case. So instead of doing any you know, modifications and not having to cut out each and every single little piece from kill mat in order to fill the cavities. I put some pennies down in there and then I used a two part silicon epoxy um, that basically you mix it and you pour it and it sets. This one, unfortunately, the last batch I bought, I usually get the one hour set and this one was a 24 hour set. So I had to sit and make it. It had to sit for a while. So I had to go to the bank. To get pennies because no one seemed to have it or at the stores at least they would give me a couple of rolls i was like i just need a couple of rolls so i actually had to go to the bank but anyway i also used non-acetone um nail polish remover uh to take off the royal kludge logo so it makes it nice and clean i actually was going to take that off and i haven't done it yet so we have the case and it's now very substantial feeling with both the silicone and the pennies it gives it a nice weight and it also makes it denser, so it should trap more of the sound that we put in there. I've also gone ahead and created, uh, this is a two, no, I did two, I did three layers, sorry. Yep, three layers, I forgot. Basically, I put it over the PCB and punched out the holes for the PCB. And this is what we're going to put on there once I screw everything together. That's why it's taken off. I also... I've got a sheet of PET plastic. And just to show you guys what this is, I got this from Amazon. Now, the PET that they use in the keyboards, like uh, like the Zoya keyboards, the GMK keyboards, it, I want to say it's a 2 mil, so it's much thinner. But the only thing that I could find was a 4 mil, or 
tenth of a millimeter thick. Um, now, this I've used before and it works really well. If you don't want to buy these or you want to, um, you know, or you can't find them or you want to do something else, something handy, if you have some Ziploc bags in the house, you get a big enough one that you can cut open and just open it up and you can use that. It, it's not PET, it's LDPE, but it's very similar. But if you can get PET sheets, I would recommend that. So as you can see, I've already made cutouts for not only the um, reset button, but also for the screw holes. Now, once I've got this all put together, then I'm also going to make holes for the center post of the switches. I'm still trying to decide which switches are going to be putting in here. And on top of this, we're going to be putting a thin sheet of PE foam. Now, there's a lot of packing PE. You can actually buy it by the roll. If you do buy it by the roll, buy the thinnest that you can find. But one of the rules of thumbs that I have is if the PE, if you can put it over your hand and still see your hand, then it's going to work. If it's too thick, like say, well, this isn't really PE foam, but actually that doesn't work for that. This is much thicker. You want it thin. I don't think I have. I think I I throw away any PE foam that's thicker because then it's gonna it could cause issues. But most keyboards and a lot of stuff that you'll buy will come in the PE foam bags or either come like this in a bag. This is actually two sheets. You can this I could actually make three or four keyboards out of. But basically, you just want one of these layers. And again, as long as you can see, this one is almost. I think this one I'd, I'd probably avoid because see how I can barely see my hand through that. Whereas with this one, you know, you can see my hand a lot more clearly actually with the light. It's hard to see, but this one is a lot um, thinner. So it's going to not, not, it's not going to cause any issues with inserting switches. So that's going to go above here and they're cut. I mean, it's not quite perfect, but because it's soft, it's going to be just fine. So with the plate, I'm not really doing anything because it does have the um, the foam already installed here. I basically, I, I left the stabilizers as is, and obviously we can't do screw-in stabilizers. Uh, these stabilizers are actually quite nice. They work very well. I usually would do like, if, if there's, you know, still ticking after lubrication, I'll clean them up and I would use the plumber's mod. And if you guys don't know what the plumber's mod is, I'll, I'll put a link to a video that I made showing all the steps to do the plumber's mod, which I think is one of the, to me, it's a better mod than the holy mod. I'm going to go ahead and put this here on top. we still got foam underneath all the switches as well as the PET. All right. I'm gonna keep it sandwiched together while I flip it over. I'm still going to hold it while I Start to get these screws in here. Not going to tighten it all the way yet. I want to make sure all the screws are in their respective spots. All right. Now, yeah, there we go. And like I said, this little bunch, we can just go ahead. Now that we've got everything together, might be tempted to do it, just pull it by hand, but it could actually tear some of what's underneath here out. So not perfect but good enough. And now that we have it out, we're going to go ahead and yeah, I don't think this one's going to work. Yeah, it's too soft. We need something with a sharp edge here. So nice sharp pair of tweezers, or you could actually probably just use one blade of the scissors, but be careful not to cut yourself. Now we want to go through and on the center post, we want to go ahead and punch out each of the holes. Why are we doing this? The switches have pins and they will push through the rest of the holes just fine. Um, but the center post on a switch is dull. So this isn't going to make that hole too much easier. In certain situations, the switches, the, the side legs, plastic legs will punch through. But in some they won't because this is a little bit thicker of the PET. So I'm going to go ahead and punch out for the side pins as well. So that's three punctures for each of the um, 
key slots. We don't obviously need to do these because now that we've got the rest of the legs pinned out, obviously support the back. The pins of the switch will cut right through the PCB. As we can see, are in the respective slots on the hot swap socket. All right, so now we've got all the holes punched out, so the switches will go in there just fine. We just have one more thing to do to finish up, and that's to put the tape mod on here. And that, this also acts as a low-pass filter, which should capture all of the higher tones and leave all of the deep tones that make a keyboard sound more enjoyable to my ear anyway everyone has different opinions of what their favorite is some prefer clacks prefer thock i just like that but it sounds good and it's pleasing and there's even some clickies i like but all right so now that we've got that in there i'm going to go ahead and slide it in make sure that usb port is where it needs to be all right everything seems to fit in there now, let's go ahead and close this up. That's why we pre-made the holes for the tape, on the tape, for the screws to go in nice and easy. All right. So everything's in there nice and good. Man, this is solid. Very, very solid. All right. So now that we've got that done... What do we do for switches? Actually, you know what? I usually end up going with a tactile switch, but why don't we keep this linear? And today I'm gonna go ahead and use some switches that were sent over to me by pulling keys. Uh, they actually sent them over to me a little bit ago and I just haven't had a chance uh, to properly review them. I'm gonna be doing a review on them soon. But a lot of you guys might be familiar with these. These are the Wook Studio Morandis. Um, and pulling keys is carrying them now. They're actually a very decent linear. They have a nice crisp snap to them. Um, and they come in packs of 35. They have packs of boxes of 35. Uh, and I think pulling keys actually has them cheaper than Wook Studio has before. But I'll provide all the specs when I go ahead and do a review of these. But I wanted to go ahead and put them in because they're white. They do have a almost like a lilac, a very light lilac stem. And they have the LED diffusers as well as five pin. And they just, they sound quite nice. So I'm gonna go ahead, load these switches up and then we'll get key caps. Then we'll figure out QMK and see how that is and load it up on Vial as well. And then we'll close it out with the sound test. So let me go ahead and load these up. All right, we've got these all loaded up in here. If you notice, I, I had to, I did have to pull a couple out and kind of repunch the holes out. And there was one that I did feel it bend when it went down. So I basically straightened it out. And I used another switch to make the holes in it. And then I put that one back in as the pin was still a little off, but it went in and it was fine. Now, if this is your first time doing it, I'd suggest doing it when it's disassembled. I'm just hard-headed and I've done it so many times. But when you're pushing it in and you support the back of the PCB so that the hot swap socket doesn't come out. But it's basically one swift motion and... You're going to apply pressure, but if you feel like you have to put too much, then you want to back off and make sure the holes have been punched through all the way. Um, don't want to take a chance on popping off a hot swap socket. All right, now we got them loaded up. I want to see how these look with the lights turned on as we have the diffusers in here. Ooh, nice and pretty. But yeah, those diffusers really help for the lights to come through so that they'll shine through between the keycaps which is um, basically what we get unless you're going with the shine throughs. So now it's time for keycaps. Hmm, what should we do? 
So between these being on sale, uh, DKC Club discount, and a drop credit that I had, I was able to get both the alphas and the mods of the MT3 BIP 2048 set, which is a set that I've been wanting to get for a while, but it's always been, I think I want to say it was either 140 or more if I got both the, what? What? What do you want? I don't know what you want. I don't speak cat tease. So uh, my cat needs something from me. What do you want? You need your medicine? Okay. I'll be back. So being a big fan of the MT3 keycap profile and the fact that I was able to get these for basically a little over five bucks plus shipping um, when they've normally been 120, 130 because each the alpha and the modifiers were sold separately. And I was able to get them and I think they're going to sound pretty good on this setup. So let's go ahead and unpackage these. Well, because I didn't get the uh, regular modifiers, um, I only got the accent modifiers. The regular modifiers are the one that includes <laughs> the backspace key. So because I don't have the modifier, regular modifiers, I don't have a backspace key. So I'm going to use for right now the enter key um, for the numpad. And I guess I'm going to have to order <laughs> the regular modifiers. I mean, it fits. It just looks funky that way. Um, and it's going to be a little bit shorter than the rest of the row, but I think I'll be okay. So let me go ahead and load up the rest of these. All right, I'm going to stick with this. <laughs> It's going to be kind of a jumble here, but besides this not being of the right row, I've got the Olivetti because I've got the, that one loaded up on the Tsangan bottom row. So the regular uh, six and a quarter um, space bar is available. So I'm going to go ahead and load this one up. And it is gray, but it doesn't quite match. Ooh, yeah, this is going to sound good. All right, so let me go ahead and load up the rest of the keys, and then we can get on the QMK and the sound test. All right, um, so this... Uh, it's just kind of cursed. I that's why I hate split kits. You should be able to buy base that has enough, and I'm fine if it's just a 60%, and then you got to get more. But to not have to for me to buy the alphas and a modifier set and not have the modifiers or some of the modifiers, it's just simply silly. And now I'm gonna have to spend another. I, I thought I got a good deal, but I'm gonna have to purchase the. The regular modifier set, which appears to be, that's yeah, $39. I thought I got a deal. Then I'll have to purchase a whole another set just to get a complete set of these keys. And that's just it's frustrating. Anyway, so I've got them on here. It's a, like I said, it's a little cursed, but it actually sounds very interesting. It kind of sounds like a typewriter to me. If it, it sounds like an older keyboard. I mean, I know we're using the MT3, the taller caps, and the mods that we've done, but I gotta say, it's it's an interesting sound. And I I love the MT3 keycap profile set because it, it each top of it, because it's sculpted, it almost feels like it's hugging your fingertips. And it just they're so just pleasant to type on. Granted. I grew up on keycaps that were tall like this, so it really is very reminiscent of the way keyboards used to be. Not that, you know, I'm not going to go buckling spring here, but we've got some linears that have a nice, decent feel to them, the nice weight. Wasn't necessarily aiming for one particular sound. I just wanted to see what I could get out of this. So um, you guys will be able to get closer idea of the sound once I do the sound test, but I gotta say, this is interesting, and I guess I'm cursed to buy another set, but I'll just wait till next month when my DKC club kicks in and I can get it for even better. So anyway, next up is loading up QMK because this does not come with QMK preloaded. We have to go ahead and 
take off the space bar, press that key to put it into firmware flash mode, and load up the QMK. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the screen where we will do that. I mean, so basically I'll hit the this reset it should put me in DFU mode. And then from there, I could just QMK toolbox, um, use that to flash the firmware onto the keyboard. I'm going to flash the VIA key map so that we can go ahead and go into VIA and map this out. So we'll be right back. Well, and here we are all loaded up with the RK61 with QMK and VIA. Um, I need to find the source, but it is ready to go. And the little testing that I did, it seems to be okay. So basically we go to the RK site and this is a different one than the normal one. Um, uh, there's actually like three or four RK sites, but I'll include the link down below to the page. And you'll see that there's a download. It says VIA and it says QMK, but it has both the JSON file and the bin file for Flash and QMK. You download it, you extract the, the folder, and you'll see that there'll be a, a doc file in there. So you can actually read through the instructions if you feel more comfortable, but it's a fairly simple thing to do. Um, open up QMK toolbox. It's most likely going to ask you to install the drivers, go ahead and install the drivers, let those all run through. And once they've all been installed, go back to QMK. Now I go ahead and select auto flash. That means that as soon as it is in DFU mode, it will flash the file. So I select that, I select the file and browse over to it. This is a .bin file, put that in and then it auto flashes QMK up. It doesn't take long at all. And then once it's loaded up, it will flash. It'll turn back on. Yeah, when you press the button underneath the space bar, all the lights will go off because it's in DFU mode at that point. So once we've got that going, we can go to use via.app and we can go ahead and load up the JSON file that's also in that extracted folder and then open it up, pair with the keyboard. And here we are. Now, I don't know what MCU this is running. I mean, I. I don't know how much RAM this MCU has, but this has 16 <laughs> layers and it's a little funky the way it's set up at first, because if you'll notice the modifier is actually mapped to layer nine and that's where everything is. And the um, standard keys, the question mark and basically the modifiers next to the space bar are acting just like the keys, the subs, or should be the lower function layer um, as the default. So the arrows are default. So if you want to change that, then you need to change that. But if you don't, then you just need to use function when you want to, you know, access one of these. And of course we do have function over here uh, or over in the corner. So you can move that to another place and you got plenty of layers. I don't think I've ever seen a keyboard with more than eight layers. This one has 16 <laughs> layers. So um, you could program this for practically anything if you wanted to switch between layers and lock them instead of just the momentary uh, layer. So uh, it's very interesting. Now I have an RK61. This is third or fourth one that I have. I have, I have a, a number of off-brand, but they're RK61s from other companies, one of them being the I Love B, it's the exact same thing. So I have quite a few of them. I really don't know how many, but this one has just become my favorite, even though it's currently got that <laughs> cursed layout. I'm, I'm going to, like I said, go ahead and get the rest of the, the kit so that I can have it full fledged on here. But I gotta say, it, it, it didn't take me too long. I did have to go and do different things here and there. And, um, I poured the silicone in the pennies and I left it sit for a day. So it dried plenty. Um, but all in all, it didn't take me that long to mod this. And it was a fun experience. I like taking a keyboard that sounds meh and then making an interesting. I mean, this one really does sound interesting. Um, with the, the PET, the I, IPXC foam or the PE foam and the silicone down below, it really sounds in my opinion like an older keyboard it's not too loud though it's not like buckling spring loud 
but it's enjoyable. In my opinion, it's it, it's really fun. I mean, there was part of me that was like, eh, I don't have all the keys. I'm just going to get rid of them. And granted, I've got other MT3 sets that could go on here, but I don't know. I just like this one. Granted, you know, we need the the right keys, but otherwise, I'm I'm quite pleased. I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Um, I'm going to be doing a comparison. Actually, I've had this planned here for a while. I've got three different types of plastic. The PET, which I used in this one. Uh, the Ziploc bags, which I mentioned. And also um, a roll of PET uh, plastic that is actually, I think it's three mil. So it's a little bit thinner than this. But it's plastic that you can buy at Home Depot that's meant to be used for laying down when you're painting. It's like it comes in a big roll. It's like 25 feet. So I'm going to try those three different plastics um, in the same keyboards. And the ones that I've got are the, um, the Tester 84s or the CIY 84s. Um, so they're all the same. And I'm going to use the same switches and the same keycap. Well, I'm going to use Ghost Judges on all of them with different color sets. And I'm going to see what it sounds like. And we're going to do comparisons. So it's going to be exactly the same keyboards with the exact same switches, Gator on Milky Yellows, with the same keycaps, I mean, different colorways, with the same keycap manufacturer and same profile. Um, and we'll get to test them and sound them all next to each other to see which plastic actually may sound better for you if you know you want to apply this mod. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards this PET, but I have yet to try the the roll the, the, the painters matte plastic and it is it is softer i know i know i can puncture it with switches really easy because it is a, it is a three mil instead of a four mil this one's a little bit more stiff that one's a little bit more flexible so that actually might win out but i'm interested myself to find out which of those plastics will come close to the the um, pet that they're putting on keyboards nowadays because i haven't been able to find source that i'm pretty sure it's two mil pet but i haven't been able to find it anywhere and if i do i'll let you guys know but that video will be coming soon so i'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the rk61 qmk edition uh loaded up with the wook studio mirandis as well as a very cursed <laughs> mt3 uh, keycap set of the 2048 with uh, an Olivetti space bar. Or, no, this is 3277, not Olivetti. No, it's an Olivetti. No, it's 3277. Yeah. I get those all mixed up. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.